Welcome to Painting Made Easy with April May. I'm April May and today we are continuing the painting with, of Dakota. So let's get started. So here I'm just continuing to do the first strokes, the up and down strokes that I did in, in part one on her ear making sure to follow the direction of her hair growth you know checking my reference photo and always trying to stay true to the direction the hair grows that's very important when you're doing animals and I know my head keeps getting in the way here hopefully that'll quit here pretty soon But I'm just adding in the highlights. These are not the final highlights. These are this is just another layer, you know, trying to figure out where I want all my highlights and my my low lights and my shadows. I'm going to jump down here to her muzzle while her face dries. And I'm still following the direction of the hair growth and I'm using a raked brush to kind of block a lot of this color in. Rake brushes are really good because they're really fast and they add, you know, like the individual hairs kind of quickly or the clumps of hair quickly, but they're kind of symmetrical. So you still want to go in with another brush on top of that and kind of break all of that symmetry up because it makes it look more like a pattern and and that's that's not how hair grows so I use it to kind of kind of rough in that the fur and then I'm going to go back in <clears throat> in my next layers and kind of break all that that pattern up And here I'm switching, switching to a liner brush, or a, sometimes they're called a detailed brush. This is where I'm going to break up that pattern I was talking about that I get with the right brush. This is how I'm going to do it. Just multiple lines, all kind of random, all going in the same direction of her hair growth. As you can see, painting is a lot of, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> Just multiple layers of it. And another thing that's very important to remember that when you're painting, you need to step back away from your easel, you know, at least six feet and view your painting 
and kind of look at it and make sure everything is kind of coming together correctly. When you're sitting right on top of it, it's hard to see exactly what's going on. You think you can see it, but you really can't. And because you're looking at it so close and you're seeing all of the brush strokes, sometimes it looks like a hot mess until you step back away from it. And then you're like, oh, you know what? This doesn't look so bad. Because most paintings are supposed to be viewed or are viewed from across a room or in the middle of a room. They, the painting hangs on the wall and you stand in the middle of the room and you admire the painting. So you're, you know, six feet or further away from it. So that's how all paintings are supposed to be viewed and why you're supposed to step back away from, from your easel and kind of look at what's going on. And a lot of times you'll notice that you're focusing the, on this little bitty detail when really when you step back away from it, you don't really need to. So again, I'm using a detailed liner brush to go in and separate that line between the white and the and the black. <clears throat> I need to break up that line with a little bitty hair, a fine fur stroke or hair strokes. Now I'm just darkening up her nose. And adding the highlight on the tip. And I kind of dabbed at the paint instead of making it just a solid color I dabbed on it because a dog's nose has a lot of texture to it you want to make sure that that comes across in the painting too And I'm still just using varying shades of gray to achieve these colors by mixing uh, Mars black and titanium white. And in the description of this video I list the type of canvas I'm using, the paints, brushes, everything you need to know about what I'm using in this painting is listed in the description below. So now we're going to move to her eyes and I'm going to 
just work on a little bit of the detail. And again, I'm just using a, a detailed liner brush. Whenever you're doing the eyes, you always want to make sure that there's usually a shadow caused by the eyelid. You want to make sure that you indicate that shadow on the iris of the eye. That's going to help give that eye some dimension. kind of tidying up the the pupil and kind of the shadowing around the eye. It's funny, her eyes are kind of a taupey color in this video kind of a gray taupey color but now I think her eyes are brown if I remember correctly I say change So I'm still just building up my shadows and my highlights. So I'm back to using a detailed liner brush. To kind of work on this muzzle which looks like a hot mess. But that's to be expected. Your your painting's going to go through these stages where it just looks like like complete failure. Like you don't know what you're doing. But it's all part of the process. You just have to enjoy it all the way through. And know and have faith that if you keep going, it's going to turn out okay.
she has all these very short kind of stiff hairs around her muzzle and that's what I'm I'm working on right now with just little short strokes with the paintbrush in the direction of the hair growth that's always very important don't forget that you're probably tired of hearing me say it but it's so important So now I'm just starting to add some of the <clears throat> detail around her mouth and her nose, her little freckles and spots. I've moved to a bigger brush just because it goes a little faster. This is just a flat. A flat that I'm using on edge. So now I'm adding a darker color to the tan spots on her face. And I needed to do this so that I could go in with the lighter color and it would it would show up. Again, when you add layers of color, the way the light reflect, reflects through it or refracts through it <clears throat> helps add dimension to your finished product. So we're coming to the end of part two of painting Dakota make sure to check out part three thank you and I hope you all have a wonderful day